welcome back to Frailing at Life with me, Banjo Jen, a um, series of tutorials for beginners on Frailing Banjo. So um, if you've been kind of following along in order so far, brilliant, um, or you might just be dropping in here for the first time. Um, well, we've basically been uh, focusing on the basic Frailing strum mostly and just starting to learn the first couple of chords so we've got our C and we've got our D7 on top of our free G chord um, so I want us to, to kind of still keep building on that frailing strum I know that like when you're first starting you'll really want to learn some tunes um, everybody always wants to learn Cripple Creek and um, that's a given and that's that's cool we'll go through Cripple Creek um, a, a little bit further along um, because the thing is with Cripple Creek, you want to put some groovy stuff in like slides and hammer-ons and stuff. So we kind of need to build up to that a little bit. Otherwise, it sounds a bit boring without the fancy stuff. Um, so we will do some tunes. Um, but at the moment, I just I still want to get us get into the stage where this hand is autopilot. And the only way to do that is to keep practicing that strum over and over and over again and playing, you know, not just the same song because that's incredibly boring um but just maybe playing a few songs um but but practicing that that frailing strum and so there's loads and loads of um folky songs that just use the chords we already know the g the c the d7 usually it would probably be a full d and we're going to learn the full d next um but for now, we don't really need it, to be honest, because uh, a couple of the songs I'm going to get you to maybe look up and play along to, we can use the D7. In fact, it, all of these ones, we, we can use the D7 for now. Um, and that is a bit easier to to grab, and, and we've, we've done that so far in a, in a couple of other tunes, haven't we? So, um, yeah, I just uh, kind of maybe want to show you a few um, songs that you can look up. Um, I'm not going to use like tabs when I'm going through any tunes or songs. Um, I know some people really like to use tabs in sheet music and that's that's cool. Um, it can be really, really helpful when, um, especially if, you, if you're doing more tune based stuff rather than songs and you need to sort of try and work out where the notes are that you, you want to play because it's quite noty. Um, and so that, that can be fine, but I would say just beware of using sort of tabs and sheet music in that way because sometimes it can turn you a bit robotic and you can only play the exact notes that you are reading off that piece of paper. And so you're thinking, right, oh, okay, I've, it's got to be uh, first string at the second fret there and it's got to be... And, you know, like I say, that's, that's cool. That's got its place when you are trying to learn something note for note. Um, but maybe that's a little bit down the line when you when you're learning kind of lo lots of more like individual notes to play a tune. Um, I think to start us off, because this hand needs to do this action, whatever we're playing, whether it's some kind of fiddle tune that we're trying to make sound a bit more banjo-y by you know following the fiddle notes and putting more note based stuff in or whether it's just a really simple song with chords um, whatever we're doing this hand this machine hand is still doing that strum and so for now I think that's still the thing that we need to be practicing and the best way to do that is just play through a few easy well-known songs um, so obviously we did like skip to Malu and, and we did take them away which was a nice slow one last time um, but uh, you can play um, uh, start and see this land is your land this land is my land from california to the new york island from the redwood forest to the gulf stream water this land was made for you and me will the circle be unbroken by and by slow. <laughs> There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are 
medley of folk songs for you that are all using a very similar pattern and all the same chords um, so you can um, you can look those up um, I mean when I say don't use tabs by all means write the chords down you know if you print off some lyrics to a couple of those you can maybe write where the chord changes but just you know beware of doing that as well because it's really good to start listening for that change and training your ear and this is why i think it's really important to sing along with what you're doing because um the more that you sing and i don't mean you've got to you know sing in front of people and go out and play gigs that that's not the aim of this um although you can if you want brilliant that's what i do but i'm a singer songwriter um so I've got to sing my songs if I want people to hear them. But, um, you know, you don't have to sing in front of an audience, but just sing at home, like sing along with stuff because it really does train your ear. Like I mentioned before, it's going to progress your playing so much faster. Um, you know, rather than, you know, getting your sheet music and, and reading, you know, this land is your land, this land is my land. And you're reading that it's a C and then a G that's all very well um and it you know it might help you in the first instance where you're still trying to kind of grab the chords and stuff but as you get a little bit more familiar with um the chords and the strum and things are coming easier if you're singing along you should be able to hear that chord change coming without looking at the sheet of paper that tells you it's coming do you know what i mean this land is your land this land is if i don't change the chord my this land is your land, this land is mine. We know that's wrong. You, do you know what I mean? It clashes. So you can tell that there's got to be a change there. This land is your land, this land is my land. Yep. From California. Do I go back up to the G? California. C even. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound right, does it? It doesn't sound right staying on the G. It doesn't sound right going up to the C must be the D7 from California to the New York Island do you see what I mean like you can do it by ear with these easy tunes these sort of well-known um, melodies that you already know so it's good practice I think to maybe not not follow like loads of sheet music and tabs if you can avoid it like I say by all means if a bit further down the line when you want to do something a bit more complicated but but at the moment try and sort of hear those chords and just take it slow you know like I say I recommend this land is your land that's a good one to, to play um depending which string you hit you can start to make it sound a bit more like the melody that's land is your land you're singing that second string note so if you want to you can make you can try and hit that second string for, for those notes. This land is your land, this land is. Then we're going to go to the G. My land, what's that note? My, oh, the open string there. My land. So you can stay on that second string. This land is your land, this land is my land. And it already sounds like you're playing a bit of the melody. Um, you don't need to try and pick out the whole melody and always be playing the same note you're singing. Sometimes it's nice to not play the same string that you're singing because then you get a bit of harmony. So if I played the first string, which is higher, this land is your, I'm going to sing the second string, your, but maybe I play the first, this land is your land. So it's harmonising 
and that's again one of the nice things about frailing because we're in a chord any string that we hit is gonna it's gonna sound nice with what you're singing uh, it's gonna harmonize okay because as long as you're playing the right chord at the right time the notes are going to fit together okay so play around with those maybe do this land is your land um you are my sunshine uh what else uh, will the circle be unbroken worried man blues froggy went a courting all these kind of old um folky type songs uh you can play literally just with those those chords that that we know okay um there is a reason for that so we um we talk about keys you might might or might not know about keys so each song or tune is in a particular key and usually that's um related to the uh the, the chord that it starts and finishes with not always um but as a general rule that that's pretty much how it works and um, so we were always starting um you know in in g and ending on g most of the time there or all, all of that was in the key of g that i was playing and in the key of g or in any key you've got a series of notes okay if you think about um what we call an octave or a, a scale so in in the the g scale if we were to say the individual notes it would be g a b c d e f sharp g and that's your scale of g okay now because they're specific notes um and you've not got some of the other sharps or flats in there only certain chords are going to kind of work in any given key and it's the chords that have the the notes in the scale so um often folky and country songs work on what this what they call like a one four five progression and grouping and all that means is one is always your root note so the the note of the key itself so in this case your root note is g we're in the key of g so number one is g if we count up those notes g a b c c is the fourth note in the scale and d is the fifth note in the scale so one four five chords tend to work together um, and so in the key of G, your four and your five is a C chord and a D chord. And that's why all those songs work just using that one, four, five um, group of chords. OK. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you were in a different key, obviously the chords would be different. If we're in a C key, the four and the five is an F and a G. So you'll find songs that are in the key of C often will have F and G chords in, in their little grouping. So we're at the moment playing everything in the key of G. Um, so that's just to let you know why those sort of chords uh, work for so many songs. <laughs> um, keep it simple, you know, one, four, five works really well um, as, as demonstrated with all those folk songs. Um, however, the thing with keys is you'll find if you are singing along to stuff, sometimes it might be a bit low for you <laughs> or a bit high. Um, but as you noticed, when I was singing, um, I mean, I've got a croaky voice today anyway, because I'm still suffering with the hay fever, as always, at this time of year. Um, but, you know, the, the key itself is quite low. So this is where maybe a capo will be a good thing for you to invest in also for just playing tunes even if you've got no intention of singing and you're going to play tunes like cripple creek and stuff um say you go to a session and you're playing along with uh, a fiddler or a guitarist or whatever if they're playing in a different key you're either going to need to know all the chords for the other key that you're not used to playing in um which is good practice to do or the the quick way is to put a capo on if you're needing to raise the key so i'm going to put a capo on just to show you this is like a, a banjo capo there's lots of different types uh, this is like a little one that it's got a curved bottom it's obviously to go around the back of the banjo and it's shorter obviously than the sort of big guitar capos that you might um, be used to if, uh, if you play guitar try and get it as straight as you can it's a bit hard to see from this angle um so if I clip on that capo, what I'm doing is I am raising the key. Uh, 
of the banjo of what we've got it tuned to so because this sort of thing here is the nut um, which is where the strings are starting from all these frets that we mentioned before are half steps okay so they're like notes going up the scale they're, they're half steps um, but you need to go up uh, a full sort of two frets to raise raise the key or raise the tuning a whole kind of step or note upwards so i'm now in a because i've capoed it two frets up so i've gone from g now to a the fifth string however is still in g which gives you a kind of a7 which is quite nice but not always what you want you, you you're going to probably want that string to be uh, in the same tuning so that means this string needs to move up to an a as well you can do that just by tuning it upwards with your tuning peg you'll probably get away with that i wouldn't recommend um tuning your strings too far beyond what they normally sit at um so don't go tuning this fifth string up to like uh you know a few notes higher but one kind of step up to your a uh, you'll get away with that 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 should be okay um so you can do that for now um what might be helpful in the future if your banjo hasn't already got them you can get sort of fifth uh fifth string capos i've, I've never used one of those i'm not even sure exactly what they look like um, I've never used them I've always used these railroad pegs so um, I don't know if you can see but there's like little metal spikes and you just get someone at the banjo shop at the instrument shop who knows what they're doing to install those for you it's dead cheap so they just put these little pegs in and that means you can then hook it's like a little metal hook you can hook your string your fifth string under those spikes and that will raise it up um you know however many steps you are along so because that's two frets along from where the string starts just like that capo is two steps along from where the strings start i'm now playing an a with that string which means it's going to be in tune with the rest of it i say in tune it's sometimes sometimes sharpens it a bit and stuff you might need to do a bit of a little bit of fiddling if, it, if it's not um, exact you can put your tuner back on and, and just check your notes uh, are not too sharp or flat but that's that's the idea of a capo so now if I played those same songs um, which were a, a bit low before I've raised it up enough that it should sound a bit better you know you are my sunshine my only sunshine just kind of sits a bit nicer for me so I often will play with a capo on because what that means is um, I can still play the same chord shapes that I would usually play without having to play whole new chords because without that capo if I wanted to play in the key of A I would have to use my finger to bar that fret every time I wanted to play what we've been playing as a G chord every time I play the G I'd have to bar the chord to make it an A and then instead of playing a C and a D seventh I'd have to be playing a D and an E because I've moved up um, a whole kind of key so each note has moved up as well so I'd actually have to play different chords for me to raise the pitch of what I'm singing whereas with a capo because you're just essentially moving that nut along you play the same shape that you already know so we're still playing as if we're doing a G as if we're doing a C and as if we're doing a D seventh but we're now playing actually an A chord a D chord and an E seventh because we've moved it up um, but I don't want to get too much into that sort of musical theory but it's just so that you 
kind of understand what that means so i would recommend um at some point you're going to want to get yourself a capo it's it is useful um and for now you can just retune that fifth peg or you can get yourself a couple of spikes or you can look into a fifth string capo like I say i've never used them so i don't i don't really want to advise for or against them i don't i don't know but um i find these railroad pegs work work really well for me um so yeah um have a practice look up um this land is your land um will the circle be unbroken you are my sunshine you know just those really simple folk songs just to get you playing a few different things so it doesn't become boring go back to skip to my loo like we did before take them away that we played last time um but also start to play some of these and that's just gonna put you in such a good place to then learn some more chords which we'll move on to next um and for um you know preparation for actually maybe playing some more tunes and thinking about the particular string we're hitting so that it does make a specific note um and then if you don't want to sing along you can make it sound like a tune or a song uh, but I do still really recommend singing along I think you know part of the fun of, of this um, style for me is the fact that we're not just playing tunes I find tunes a little bit boring I mean they're great don't get me wrong there's some amazing tunes and when you watch good players like it is amazing um but it's just not something i want to do day in day out i don't want to play tune after tune after tune um i want to i want to involve lyrics i want to have some songs and rhythm and stuff going on as well so anyway i'll leave you with that for now and uh, like i say next time we'll go over some more chords and then we'll start maybe getting a little bit fancy after that and put in um putting some stuff in once uh, once this hand is getting trained as well as this hand all right see you later